guys and ladies um, this late in the game to sit through another session but we appreciate it um, I don't know how much you know about network solutions I thought I'd just spend a minute with you to see anybody here have any idea how long we've been in business see that's good I'll tell you 22 years long time to be in this business I've really appreciated all of the relationships we built over that period of time we started to sell Cisco and Cisco went from their direct sales and support model to the channels model. Uh, so we've been very much heavily involved with Cisco. Primarily we are a Cisco reseller. That's really where we focus and um, have a good staff of engineers and, and salesmen. Our corporate's up in South Bend, in Granger, Indiana, and we have an office down here in Long Place. So we're being supported on both sides of the middle of the state and the upper part of the state. I hope this is a presentation that you guys really get something out of. It's going to be a little bit higher level, I think, rather than really down and dirty technical. Um, never know from Kevin, you may hear all kinds of things from him. You might hear about his family, you might hear about sports, he might even talk some technical with you. Who knows? We'll see where, where he takes this whole thing today. And then we've got um, Eric Wheely from Apple, who's going to fill in a little bit of how, how Apple and, and the whole wireless thing works together. Um, Really, I think that's all I want to do is just welcome you. Thank you very much for coming. There's a good turnout here today. And with that, I'll just uh, turn it up to you. Fantastic. Thank you. So I'm going to try to yell. I don't like microphones. So if I uh, kind of keep it loud, can you guys hear me in the back and stuff? Excellent. And I'll also try to stay away. So we're um, Kevin Fluke. I uh, work for Cisco Systems. I've been around yes, for some time. Like and I have the pleasure of running around the... Uh, a couple of states areas and, and, and teaching or, or helping our um, partners, resellers, keep up on technology, right? So, so I'm gonna. They gave me like 30 minutes, so we're gonna have to try to stay at a high level. But if you've got any, uh, you know, questions, we can dig down as deep as you want to go. If you, you know, tier two or, or afterwards and stuff like that. But we're here to talk about mobility, all right? So, and, and you can still hear me, all right? And, and by the way, if you uh, act like you're not paying attention, I'll tell you really bad jokes. That's a bad habit I have. But, uh, to be honest, that's the only jokes I really know. <clears throat> okay, so mobility. We're going to talk a little bit about market trends, some of the challenges. You guys probably live that much more than I do, right? So, so, so we'll just hit on some of the solutions that Cisco has. I promise not to jump into the uh, you know part numbers and, and, and stuff like that, but we'll talk about a lot of uh, wouldn't it be cool type stuff. Wouldn't it be cool if your network did this? Wouldn't it be cool if your wireless did this? You know, when we talk about solutions that are out there or where it's going to do that, all right? And, and maybe have a little bit of a uh, Q&A at the end. So when you see this slide, it's not an Apple commercial, right? Maybe it should be. Uh, but, but if you think about it, all the different wireless devices, um, you guys pick a number. I don't care what it is. I used to quote numbers. 1.3 billion by 2012, 7 billion by 2015, 10 billion, all these different numbers, right, that somebody comes up with much smarter than me that says how many wireless devices are coming into our world. And you all get the pleasure of supporting them, don't you? Maybe. How many people are going, no wireless devices on my network? <laughs> Used to, people would talk like that, right? I'm not supporting wireless fluke, go away. Uh, of course, people used to say stuff like, I'm not supporting phones on data networks either, go away. You know, so these things have a way of changing whether we like it or not, right? And believe me, my crystal ball is fuzzy sometimes when we talk about some new technology. But wireless is here to stay. I think you'd all agree with that. A lot of different devices coming out and stuff like that. Questions? How many wireless devices do you think I have in my house? <laughs> 18 is a good question, or a good answer. Yes, anybody? Yeah, nine. Honestly, didn't know, to be honest with you, so I started counting out yesterday. This is what I came up with. Now, I just took a stuff in my head. I didn't even take a spectrum analyzer look around my network or whatever, right? I came up with 25 wireless devices in my house that affects the wireless spectrum that my laptop works off of, right? Same anything up there looks kind of funny or geeky? What? Microwave, yeah, leaky microwave. Guess what frequency that hurts? 2.4, yeah, you know, it only hurts it when it's on. <laughs> helicopter. My son has a 2.4 gigahertz helicopter controlled little bitty gyroscope. You ever seen those? Very cool, by the way. Very, very cool. You can actually run around stuff like that. You don't think about those things. I have this little thing that sits on top of my refrigerator with a, you know, like three, you know, like good, bad, middle, or whatever, for my water softener. It keeps track of it. Guess what frequency that sticks to? 
2.4, yeah. So a lot of devices. My only point of this slide is there's a lot of wireless devices out there. Long way to go, but that's the only point. You guys agree? And, and, and folks are having to decide what do I do with all these different devices, stuff like that. You guys can't read this, so I'm going to hit just a couple of key things. This was a, uh, a, a university, right? But the number of Apple devices that they had to support on their network in the fall of 07 was about 1,500, right there. The, the fall of 09, all right? So 7 to 9 went from 1,500 to 12,988. Over Christmas, the spring of 09, it jumped up to what? 17,000. Oh my gosh. How many people in here have kids? How many kids are asking for something that's wireless? You know, right? You know, Xboxes and Wii's and all the different stuff that comes out. Um, wireless. And it's coming into your network, right? Cisco's talking a lot these days about how we solve solutions around the bring your own device. Because that's a challenge. You know, you guys, you want one-to-one, -one, right? Well, sometimes that one-to-one, -one, you know, is expensive. Maybe you start letting kids start bringing their own devices. You know, if it helps the education learning, maybe you do it, right? But, but things like that are being discussed. You guys agree? And, and by the way, you can't hurt my feelings. I tell folks I've been married 26 years. I've got six kids. I have no pride left. I really don't. You know? I don't. I'm happy to be here. They actually pay me. They get me out of the house. It's kind of fun and stuff. But the point is, lots of devices, right? So when it comes to Cisco, we do a lot of stuff in wireless, um, but, but it's not just like one solution fits all anymore. Um, maybe one, actually when I started selling wireless for Cisco, it seemed like we had one solution. It was kind of simple, right? Now we've got all these different, you know, we got indoor access points, outdoor <coughs> access points, we got um, access points for like the big stadiums, right? And, and, and there's reasons. We've got cheap access points, we've got expensive access points, what can some do, what can't do. So, so it's becoming more and more critical that you kind of got to look at a wireless infrastructure from top to bottom, right? Um, not only the hardware, how do I control it and manage it and stuff like that. Management, right? Not only the installation of it, but how do I track and how do I know when things are coming on and all that, and we're going to talk about that. The only point I want you to take out of here is when it comes to wireless infrastructure anymore, Devices are increasing, we all agree, right? The amount of bandwidth going to those devices are increasing, right? Oh, here's one. How many people are not going to allow video on your network? See, that's another thing that's being shut down our throats, right? And I, I shouldn't say negatively. It's not, it's not bad, but it's a challenge, right? And people are just going, what do you mean I can't watch this video on this little device I just bought at Walmart for $99? You know, there's, there's challenges. People are wanting video now, so my applications are taking more and more bandwidth. So we're going to talk about some of that stuff. So management's huge. How do you integrate it? How do you track it? If something's bad on wireless, how do I track it back to the switch it's plugged into and, and things like that? How do, how do I know where it's at? So, so we're going to talk about stuff like that. All sorts of models and stuff we're not going to touch on because there's no way we can in 30 minutes. Jeff, can you keep, help me keep track of time? Thank you. Please. I have those moments where I can realize I'm not going to keep track of time, you know, and it just kind of goes like that. So we're going to talk a little bit about management. Used to, we would manage things such as, okay, I got one management to, or one management <coughs> platform to make things work, you know, when I get the, the geeks out there plugging things in, it works, and then I get the help desk that has to troubleshoot it. A lot of times those things don't match up, right? Or when you want to troubleshoot a user, I got to go to five different systems to find out. You know, is it on the network? Can they authenticate to my AAA? Um, is my IP um, server handing out IP addresses? Stuff like that, right? We're trying to, not trying, we have to get it all integrated, right? So my latest management, this Prime NCS system, basically allows me to look at a user. And so that user that calls the help desk, because guess what? Most devices don't call the help desk. It's usually the user, right? I need to troubleshoot from that point on. So it's so on one system that says, Jeff Byers is having trouble. He's the one talking to me. I need a management system that tells me, is he on the network? Is he on it via v VPN? Is he on it via wireless? Is he on it via wireless? What's the problem, right? So, so that's what we're getting to with this latest system, just being able to say, let's troubleshoot it like we need to from the user standpoint. I don't care what device, how he got on. I need to just find out what the problem is, right? So that's management. Uh, when it comes to management, right, users like yourself say, guess what? Uh, the number of devices, client devices, that's my biggest concern. All the number of devices coming on. People are buying their own device, bring your own, we talked about that. The second pie that's the biggest challenge or whatever I'm trying to say is RF interference, right? How do I troubleshoot this stuff? A lot of things affect wireless, right? 
Uh, my Ricky microwave oven, that new toy someone just bought, a new phone system that's wireless that people just put in down below you, right? You know, neighbors put a new access point on, whatever. Things affect us. How do you troubleshoot? How do you see it? Because if you're like most people, I look in here, I don't see it. You guys look up and see these fancy waves and all this stuff? So our, our, our network infrastructure has to have help you troubleshoot, right? So we're going to talk about some of that. And again, basically, who's connecting? What device are they using? Are they authorized? And maybe I can even get to the point where I'll let you get on the network with your device, but I'm not going to let you copy stuff down. To it, right? You know, we got to get that drained. Does that make sense? And, and troubleshooting. Wouldn't it be cool if I have one pane of glass or whatever you want to call it that I look up Jeff Byers and it tells me, by the way, you know, here here's his IP address, his MAC address, here's the device. Is he connected via wireless or wireless? You know, what's the problem? In this case, you know, he's got link connectivity. I see his machine. He's on the network. Um, he authenticated via 802.1x or your radius, AAA, whatever. He's authenticated, so he's authorized. And this Jeff with the right password. That's cool. And then IP connectivity. No IP connectivity. Why not? He doesn't have an IP address. Oh, maybe that thing's going to be fits again. Right? Side note: Jeff Byers has so many IP. I found out this today. He has so many IP uh, devices at his house. He ran out of his IP score. You tell me that. <laughs> You know, I mean, seriously, things happen. You know, he's got, so he's got more devices on his network than I do. But those are the type of, how do you know, right? How do you know? That's what we got to get to. How do you know? Um, we've got this policy management device called ISC out there that basically says, okay, Captain Fluke can get on the Cisco network using this device because Cisco gave it to him, and he has full access to everything. That's okay, right? But what if Captain Fluke wants to get onto this, onto the Cisco network with this device that he bought Meaning that if he leaves, he's taking this with him, right? Do I allow devices to come into it? Or how do I, you know, get to the point where I say, okay, Kevin Fluke's getting on the network, but he's coming in via VPN from his house, so I don't let him download Salesforce.com. I only allow him to do that if he's in the network. See what I'm saying? We're, we're having to get to the point where, who is it? What device? How are they getting on the network? Even down to what time of day? Does that make sense? That's what people are wanting specifically if you're going to start allowing to bring your own device. Such as this. So, you know, faculty member, two different devices. A device that the district provided and his personal device. Logs in the same way, plugs in the same, you know, um, connection or gets on the same access point. But the system needs to be smart enough to go, he's authorized. I know him. I don't know the device. I'm going to let him on the network, but he can't get to certain systems. I'm going to put him in a different VLAN, or I'm going to tag those packets with a different security level. Does that make sense? And again, bring your own device, right? It's becoming more and more important. There's value, possibly, in your company or your, your um, um, school to allow him to be able to use his own device. Right? You get a lot more work out of them a lot of times, or, or more efficient, things like that. Or a kid, right? One of the students. But you got to also be sure that you don't allow data to get sent to that device, or get into the wrong systems if you don't want to trust that device. Okay? With me so far? Um, clean air technology, the capability to be able to look into the air and see what's going on. Right? Um, a number of different reasons. Um, if things don't work, I want to be able to troubleshoot, right? Or maybe have the system smart enough to work around that issue, such as a leaky microwave oven or what have you. But how do I know what's on the network? If I'm a, if I'm a school system, do I want to know if there's an Xbox on the network? Better yet, not to bring local news into it and stuff. If you're a school system, do you want to know if there's a wireless camera in the locker room? Yeah, right? I mean, you know, those are the type of things that nowadays the system needs to be smart enough. Because guess what? If you don't have a system that can tell you when there's an IP camera on your network all of a sudden, how are you going to know it? And by the way, it's not on your network. It's inside your building, right? So it's not jumping on your network. It's actually its own little wireless network. So you need a sensor, you need this, the network itself to say, not only am I providing my system so that people can connect to it, but I'm also looking. And I can tell you, hey, there's a radar that just came up that's affecting your system. Hey, there's an IP camera that just came up. And by the way, it's over here. I can get within a certain meter, you know, and stuff like that. Does that make sense? So, so that type of capability. Um, you, you know, and, and if you don't have it, I'm going to bring this up too, see if it's actually working. That's not pretty. There we go. You can hire a geek like me to come in with a spectrum analyzer and walk around your infrastructure and tell you stuff like this, right? 
here's the good channels, here's the bad channel, here's the devices, here's what you have, here's the number of Xbox, and yada, yada, yada. You can, people have been doing it for a long time, right? But you need your infrastructure to start being, to be able to do that automatically. Does that make sense? And in this same spectrum, analysis is built into the access point, some of them now. All right, and hardware, so you have this type capability, you have a geek like this with a PC with an antenna in every access point. Okay, not really a geek in the aggregate. I'll tell you that. Um, does that make sense? So, so that's the type of capability we're trying to get to. All right, this is cool. We're going to talk for just a minute. Uh, in, in the back row, back in the corner, in the middle. What's your name? Nick. Nick. How are you, Nick? We good. You doing good? Yep. Good. I'm talking to Nick, right? Mm -hmm. Am I facing Nick? Yeah, I am. Come on, who said no? <laughs> Me too. You're Nick? I'm Nick. Good. I'm going to talk to this Nick. How are you, Nick? Yeah. Am I talking to Nick? This Nick. Yeah. Hey, Nick, how are you? If I talk to you, do I point in different directions? No. I, I usually, hey, Nick, how are you, right? And you can hear me better because I'm talking specifically to you, right? Client link is the same way. The technology is allowing our access point to talk to this Nick, and when I'm talking to you, I actually adjust my signal so that when he gets two or three signals reaching him, they're actually additive. Anybody math teacher in here? I was going to say, are you proud of me? I used the word additive. <laughs> anyway, I'm not a math person. But you get my point, right? This technology allows me to talk to an end device, right, by, by changing my signal. Every time I talk to Nick, I change my signaling so he gets a better <coughs> signal. If I'm talking to Nick back here, I change my signaling so I talk to Nick. All right? Because my signaling is better if I focus it on him. Does that make sense? Because here's the way wireless works. And, and, and this is kind of simple, but I'm a simple-minded guy, so this helps me talk about it. How are you today? You having a good day? Mm -hmm. good. How are you today, Larry? Doing, Doing well. Good. It talks to people, or sorry, that the wireless system talks to devices in the speed that that device can talk. And it talks to them one at a time. So if this device only speaks one meg, or BG type speed, guess what? As an access point, I'm talking to him, and I slow things down. Even my beacon to tell him that I support him is slow. How are you today? He talks back to me at that same speed. Then I can jump over here to someone that's talking 802.11 in, and I can talk a lot faster because it's three times the speed, you know, and all that geek type stuff. When it comes to wireless, if I talk to him as fast as I can, then I talk to him as fast as I can, and talk to him as fast as I can, I not only service more clients, but I get more data out to them, right? If I have to retransmit, how do And he goes, what? And then I have to retransmit to him. You guys are still waiting for me. Wireless is shared, right? And by the way, if I start doing video over wireless, which you all probably you know, have to realize if you're not doing it today, you will, that's a lot of data. <laughs> you know, I'm dumping data as fast as I can, then I go over here and I dump all this data as fast as I can. I have to do that. It's like a domino effect. You with me? So the faster I talk to the clients, less retransmitting. When I talk to Nick, I'm talking to him as fast as I can. My signaling is perfect for him. I talk to this Nick over here, it's perfect for him. I talk to Larry, it's perfect for him. That's what client link is. And it's cool technology, not a lot of people can do it. And it takes a lot of processing, a lot of the, um, you know, transmitting a little faster on this antenna than this antenna and stuff like that. But it's kind of cool. The bottom line is more bars, faster data, right? And the end user experience is much better. Does that make sense? Good. And sometimes I struggle with trying to explain client link, so. Um, band select. Band select is technology that basically says that device that you're holding on to right there, or this device on your hip or whatever, a lot of times it can speak in the old 2.4 type range or it can talk in the 5 gigahertz range, right? There's benefits to your infrastructure if I encourage that device to talk in the 5 gigahertz, okay? More channels, uh, you know, less interference from that little helicopter type stuff, right? You know, that we've talked about. Band select basically says, do you speak 2.4, do you speak 2.5? And this guy goes, yes, yes. And I go, cool, I'm gonna make you speak five. That's what it comes down to. The way it actually works is he tells me, I, I speak 2.4 and I ignore him. And then he finally goes, do you speak five? Yes, I do. And then we start talking five. 
That's band slick. It's kind of cool. Even simple stuff like that. But the more um, the more devices, more bandwidth you want to work on your wireless, the more stuff like this helps. You with me? Uh, video streams the same way. The idea that uh, more and more videos coming to you. And this is not YouTube. This is not one person watching one video stream. This is a NASA multicast video coming out to you know your school and it's going to hit all your different devices not just a conference room but i'm talking like you know one video stream coming out to a hundred different devices the way we used to do it is basically i have to send a hundred different video streams from my controller out to every device and it eats up a lot of bandwidth and stuff nowadays my access point itself takes the multicast all the way down to it and then it breaks it up and sends it to you and you and you and you and you and you, and you. that makes sense so so we're doing it better um, I can do things such as uh, reserve, you know, or prioritize this video stream is more important than this video stream. I can do things like that. I can also determine that, you know what, you're all in here, I'm an access point, you're my devices, your laptop. I can only talk to about half of you in video, so I'm going to talk to the, the first half that joins, and then the rest of you I'm going to tell you I can't support you. All right? It sounds silly. In the past, though, I tried to support everybody, and everybody's stuff would mess up. All right, so I'm having to say, okay, I can only support so many. The rest of you, you're not going to work at all. But the ones that I'm supporting, you're going to have great video. Does that make sense? So we're just getting smarter about being able to support video. That's multicast. Keep that in mind. Multicast video. Um, couple <coughs> things real quick. Am I doing all right on time? Ten minutes? Woohoo! I can slow down. Um, any Connect technology is basically just a client that's. Kind of like having the same plan on everything. The same plan on your iPad, your hip device, your PC, all this. That just basically allows you like fancy VPN connectivity, always on security, stuff like that. Okay? Um, it becomes more and more important as we get to cloud services. You know, if you think about it, if I'm a corporation, whether you're a school or a company or whatever, and I'm supporting cloud services, and you can bring your own device, and you can work from home, how do I know when you're doing anything? How do I keep track of it? How do I fire you? Right? So there's capabilities built in the client that says you're always going to go through the corporation. I'm always going to keep track of you through the corporation. Even to the point now where this software logs you onto these cloud applications. So your machine at your network at home, but the software requires you to go to corporate and corporate logs you into these devices. That way when I want to fire you, I just turn off your access and nothing works. If I don't start doing things like that, I fire you and then I think, well, you're using your laptop, your smartphone. You can still get the Salesforce.com or whatever that cloud service is. How do I stop you? I got to now log into six different cloud services and take off your ID and all this type of stuff. You see what I'm saying? So we're having to get smarter about that as well. We're doing that with some software um, on all the devices. Okay, um, just a, a product introduction, real quick. New access point. Uh, basically, more bars, right? Better signaling. Um, we used to support when we. All, everybody, right, in the industry, uh, when, when 802.11b came out and, and people would say something like, yeah, we're getting 6 meg of throughput, right? This thing supports up to 450 meg of radio throughput, but the software is now making up to 300 meg of actual data throughput to a device, all right? So, so that's something new and it's fancier and all this type of stuff. The point is, more data, right, and it's mainly video that's pushing this need for that wireless device. To get a lot more. And again, the sooner I talk to each device, um, the, the, the less everybody else has to win. So what do you do with all this information? Um, if I was you, I would consider number one, switching to 802.11n technology. This is what allows you to speak faster, right? Gives you that fancy, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. Uh, bandwidth now, if you're like you saw on that last slide, 450 meg. All right. So, so again, start considering switching to 802.11n technology if you have not. Um, and, and real quick note, when, when the technology in wireless came out, and everybody used to say 802.11b, which was 2.4 gigahertz, and 802.11a, which is five. Right? N works at both. So you can have 802.11n working at 2.4, and you can have 802.11n working at five. Kind of confused. It always before that last number would tell me what frequency we're talking about, in the not. Does that make sense? It's a little side note, it's just confusing. Um, configure for high density wireless. Used to, I would have a room like this and I'd put one access point in. How many people do you think can fit in this room? Anybody have a clue? 30, 40? 
What's that? Yeah, yeah. Poor Jeff Farmer. That's true. That's true. Right. The, the, the point is, they used to be able to cover everybody because no one really cared about the amount of bandwidth as much as you know as we need to nowadays. Nowadays, I'm putting less clients on access points. You know, maybe it's one access point per room with a one-to-one -one of 30 kids. Right? Where before I could have one access point, I could support 60 kids. I don't care. They're not doing very much. It's email. It's this. It's that. As we're getting more and more video and that higher bandwidth comes up, I'm having to have to put more access points in. All right? However, I will say this. The better the access point, the more throughput, so the less numbers. All right? So, so it really makes a difference. And, and you know, dude, I work for a many of them. I hate that. I have teenagers. Do you guys have teenagers? I, I pick up their wording as opposed to the other way around. So I call people dude. It's embarrassing. Um, the, the point I'm trying to make, I guess, is um, access point A is not the same as access point B from different manufacturers. And, and you can test that by seeing how much throughput you get. You know, we did a uh, we had a college that, that couldn't decide between Cisco and another manufacturer, so they actually said, okay, top two dorms are Cisco, bottom two dorms are this other vendor. And then a year later they came back and said, you know, we got 45 of yours and we ended up with 60 some or whatever the competitors because they couldn't get as much throughput. So, so the only point is, if, even if I sit there and tell you, oh, I can support, you know, 80 clients, well, test them if you can. I actually see how much throughput because it does matter, okay? Access points are not access points, but people are shocked when we're starting to put them closer and closer together. But when you're supporting data and voice and video, you're, you're getting less room per access point, okay? Um, what was I going to talk about this? Just, uh, again, 802.11n, again, you know, we're up to three streams on 802.11n, 450, 500. Um, so, so the throughput, and, and guess what? Throughput's like money. The more you have, the more you use. It really is. But the more throughput I get after the wireless clients, the more they're using. That analogy makes sense, huh? I'm going to have to write that down. Um, do you support every bandwidth out there? Right? That's another thing. Do I support old clients? You know, some of you may go, I'm just going to turn it on, I'm going to support everybody. Now, here's some dangers in doing that. If I can geek out for just a minute. Remember when I was talking to the gentleman up front and I said that slower bandwidth it takes me longer to even beacon or tell him I'm alive, right? For me to beacon to you, if you're an end client and I'm an access point, at one meg, it takes 296 milliseconds, or is that microseconds? Mm -hmm. Micro. Thank you. Keep me, keep me not lying here. 290. For me to beacon to someone that's up to the 300 or the 802.11n um, type specs, 27. It takes me longer just to tell you I'm out there. So what a lot of folks are having to do is they're just stopping all this. I'm not going to support anybody. If you're not up to 802.11g speeds, 54, dude, you're off my network. Dude, I said it again. <laughs> but does that make sense? So, so, you know, you don't necessarily want to just turn everything on. I'm going to support every device out there. Because you know what? If you got somebody who's got one of those flip-top phones, there's a reason you might not want to support it, right? You know, so, so it can be detrimental. All right. Um, implement Cisco Radio Resource Management. The system's getting it smart enough to work around interference and stuff. Microwave oven comes up, it blows up channel 6. The system is getting it smart enough to go, I'm going to switch you to channel 1. Switch this guy over here to channel 6 without the interference, okay? The system itself is getting smart enough to do that. People are using it too. When it first came out, you didn't want to use it. It's been out for years. It's working much better nowadays, okay? Yeah.